Okay. Um, thank you guys for coming today. Um, we're really excited to talk about extending on way, a guide to custom extension with on way gateway. So before we get started, I'd like to know how many of you have heard about on way gateway before the session? Can you show me your hand? Okay, a couple of them. <clears throat> And how many of you have actually used it in development or testing? Okay. And anyone using it in production? Okay. Um, hope I can persuade somebody to try it out. Okay, after, after the session. Um, I'm Hua Bin Zhao from Tetri. I'm an Envoy Gateway maintainer. And I'm Guy Deitch from SAP, also an Envoy Gateway maintainer. Okay, let's jump in. <clears throat> So let's kick this off with some background of Gateway API. Um, think of it as an upgrade of the old Ingress API. And we know that um, Ingress API, the, the Ingress API has limited feature in terms of the traffic management for your gateway. I think it may cover like 50% of what you really need for your gateway. But for the other 50%, maybe some unstructured annotation, so you know how messy and uh, how to maintain it can get. But if you upgrade to Gateway API, you get a much richer set of features, like uh, you can route tra traffic based on um, ATP pass, um, header, host, even query parameter, and you get some advanced feature like uh, traffic splitting, request redirection, and uh, header manip manipulation. All these features are previously only available uh, with the uh, annotation, now can be directly handled by the Gateway API itself. But uh, we know that any standard, no matter how it's defined, it ultimately ends up being just a lone command eliminator of all the implementation, and the Gateway API is no exception. But what I personally love about the Gateway API is that it's, uh, it's uh, innovation allowing you to extend its core API with a very well-defined structured manner. So, for example, you can define your own policy, policy uh, custom policy, like uh, for security, maybe you add some authentication or authorization um, policy, but you can attach a policy um, to the core gateway API without mod modify the core API itself, it's much cleaner than annotation. Also, custom filters and custom back backend, etc. And uh, Envoy Gateway, it's uh, actually it's a fully compatible of Gateway API implementation. Um, it's a controller for managing, deploying, configuring the Envoy as a API Gateway, so it does all the heavy lifting. It can handle traffic for both Kubernetes and uh, web based workloads. Um, it doesn't stop at the Gateway API. It uh, also uh, introduces some advanced features. So it, you can think about it like a superset of Gateway API. For example, it has the client traffic policy, which can help you config, config the connection between clients and NOE, and uh, backend traffic policy for the configuration between NOE and the backend service and a secure policy for the YDC, GW authentication, and IP whitelist calls, um, et cetera, and the NOE patch policy and the NOE extension policy um, uh, in case you want to uh, add your own extension and uh, um, go beyond its default feature. Uh, and also, you can, it has its own custom ATP role filter and uh, backend to raw traffic uh, outside of the Kubernetes cluster. Um, today we want to talk about Envoy extension policy. Uh, it's type of gateway, gateway API um, policy attachment that allows you to load a custom extension into Envoy to inject your own custom logic for request and response process. And right now, it supports two type of extension, Watson an external process, and we are looking forward to seeing more in the future, like Lua and Dynamic Module. Uh, it's uh, very flexible in terms of configuration. Uh, it's supposed to attach uh, 
a policy on both the gateway and HP rollout. If target on gateway, it will be automatically applied to all the HP rollouts under that gateway. And you are not limited to only one extension policy. You can actually define multiple extensions. For example, in this uh, configuration, we define two uh, WASM extension and another actual process extension uh, to handle different tasks uh, within one policy. And you can also control precisely how the uh, how your extension are applied in the filter chain by the only proxy resource. Uh, for example, we move the actual process uh, after rate limiting, probably because uh, we have some very heavy processing in the actual process. Uh, we, don't, we don't want to waste our CPU time on some unnecessary uh, request. Um, what's an extension we support like uh, uh, OC image at a remote WASM code source, which means you can package your WASM module as an OC image and put it to an OC registry and uh, just use the tag within the own extension policy. Uh, it brings uh, some benefits. For example, you, you can use the tag of OC image to manage the version of your WASM module. So uh, you can easily roll out, roll back, or test any version of your WASM module. If you have any sensitive data uh, inside the WASM module, you can uh, use a private image, uh, which means only the user who have the right access uh, can, uh, can purchase this WASM module and uh, use it in your inverted way. We can also, we, we can use the existing tool set of the OCI system to manage and distribute uh, the WASM module. Here are some examples of the NVIDIA extension policy with WASM extension. Um, on the left side, it's an uh, OCI image. Uh, the first one is a public image. Basically, you only need to uh, specify the URL of the WASM module uh, within your NVIDIA extension policy. The second one is a private image. Uh, so you also need to uh, specify the length of the Kubernetes secret, which stores the credential for your private image. Um, the right one is the uh, HP WASM source, so you only need the URL uh, for this uh, WASM module. Thanks, Wabing. So besides WASM, which is a pretty well-known extensibility mechanism in Envoy, Envoy Gateway also supports the external processing filter, which is less known. Um, this filter is also capable of inspecting and mutating HTTP requests and responses, um, and it does so by um, registering an external callout to an external gRPC service that is responsible for this functionality. Now, this service can be registered to uh, the relevant lifecycle hooks of the stream, so for example, request headers or response body, etc. And the protocol between Envoy Proxy and the external processor is actually quite simple. Envoy proxy generates a processing request that typically contains the relevant portion of the stream, so for example, request headers, and then uh, this is sent to the external processor, which uh, needs to return a processing response, where this response would typically contain something like a mutation, so for example, adding or removing or changing headers or the body itself, or even possibly an immediate response if we want to, for example, block a certain request. Now, Using an out-of-process extension obviously creates um, some new considerations and challenges, right? So, uh, for example, for security, we now have to authenticate this external extension. We maybe want to ensure that the data is transmitted in a confidential manner, right? For resilience, uh, there's now network between Envoy and this external extension. So uh, some instability can occur due to network hiccups. Um, this extension has a decoupled lifecycle from Envoy, so maybe it's unavailable at some point in time and Envoy cannot reach it, right? So we have to take care of all sorts of uh, resilience-related aspects here, and also, uh, notably, performance, right? So if previously uh, extension would run in process, now we have an out-of-process extension with some network communication um, that adds additional latency and possibly even other things like additional marshalling and unmarshalling that's happening and uh, encryption. Now, to mitigate some of these uh, concerns and to help with some of these uh, things, Envoy Gateway offers a lot of advanced configuration options. Um, so for example, for security, we can establish MTLS between Envoy Proxy and this external processor. 
for resilience, we can uh, leverage Envoy Gateway's uh, extended backend ref to specify all sorts of behavior uh, with regards to the connection pool from Envoy to the external processor. So setting up health checks, failover, circuit breakers, timeouts, whatever we need to uh, tailor our solution to be a, a more resilient architecture. And finally, for performance, Envoy Gateway makes it possible to integrate an external processor using Unix domain sockets and not just TCP sockets that uh, opens up uh, a path to reduce the latency and to some degree uh, reduce the performance impact of using an out-of-process extension. So here we can see an example of uh, such an advanced deployment pattern. So um, you can see that we have a backend resource of Envoy Gateway that has an endpoint which is not a fully qualified domain name or an IP or a Kubernetes service, rather it is a path to a Unix domain socket that it would use to communicate with this external processor. We have the Envoy extension policy that binds this external processing uh, uh, service um, to an HTTP route, but also configures various backend settings. So for example, here we have active gRPC health checks and circuit breakers and timeouts. Um, we have the backend TLS policy that attaches to the backend and essentially instructs Envoy to always use TLS when communicating with this particular backend. And we also have the Envoy proxy resource here that uh, defines a client certificate that Envoy proxy should use to authenticate itself towards the external processor, uh, thereby creating essentially an MTLS connection. So as we discussed, we support two types of extension. What's an external process? Um, picking the right one really depends on your user case. So let's go over a few cases to think about. If performance is a high priority, uh, we probably go to Watson because they run directly within a way which reduce overhead. Um, in contrast, external process extension because they rely on network communication, so which can add a little bit of latency. But uh, as Guy um, introduced, we can use like a uh, Set a car deployment to reduce this uh, latency. <clears throat> when it comes to functionality, um, Watson, because they run in sandbox, so which uh, only have access to the resource and API exposed by the sandbox, <clears throat> that's, a, that's its limitation. Um, however, external process extension, they can be written in any language and have full access to any external uh, the, all the actual world. Um, for deployment, WASM extension uh, is very convenient. So you just need to dynamically load them from OSI registry or ITP server. Uh, so that's, that's it. And actual process extension. Um, in addition to our uh, in way extension policy, you also need to deploy them and allocate a resource for them. So which is uh, a, a little bit complex to the deployment. Security is very important. Um, Watson runs within Inway, so which means any bugs, any issues could potentially impact Inway's stability. However, external process extension, they, they are in a separate process, so if something goes wrong, it won't directly affect Inway's operation. Lastly, scalability. What's the extension? They are tied to Envoy instance, so they can only scale together with, together with the Envoy instance. Uh, and they will share the resource with Envoy. And external process extension, they can scale independently and they can be allocated resource as needed. So at the end of the day, it really depends on what you need, whether it's uh, uh, performance and simplicity or uh, flexibility and uh, access to the external world. I hope this breakdown can help you decide which option is best for your use case. Okay. Thanks, Wobing. So, for this talk, we wanted to present <coughs> a project from the LLM space that's leveraging Envoy Gateway extensions. Um, it's called the Kubernetes LLM Instance Gateway. But before we dive into that, maybe just a bit of background on the topic. So. As many of you are probably aware, LLMs can be tuned to perform certain tasks better, right? And one of the popular tuning techniques is called low rank adaptation or LoRa. Now, the nice thing about LoRa is that it makes it possible for us to take a certain base model, load several LoRa adapters together with this base model within a single LLM server, 
and then essentially have a server that is tuned to perform various tasks. Now, this is very advantageous for operators and providers of LLM because it helps us really reduce costs and um, manage our resources much better, uh, as opposed to having a fleet of servers where each server can only be tuned to perform one specific task, uh, as is the case with other tuning techniques. Um, so this is great for LLM operators, but there are still some limitations. Uh, namely, these uh, adapters also consume some resources. And so there's a limit to the amount of adapters can, that can actually run concurrently within a single LLM server. And this creates a certain challenge for us because um, if a server receives a request that requires a certain adapter, and this adapter is currently not loaded, and the server already reached its maximum capacity of loaded adapters, this request would essentially queue until we can swap out one of the currently running adapters and swap in this uh, necessary, this required adapter. And um, this can actually create a significant delay until this uh, request is processed. And so we understand that when we're using something like a generic round robin kind of load balancing algorithm, uh, there's really nothing that would stop this sort of thing from happening, right? Requests are just, um, you know, load balanced at random. And it's possible that a request would reach a pod that is not the most optimal pod, not the most uh, best suited pod to handle this request. And so to handle this challenge and uh, to, to solve this issue, the Kubernetes Serving Working Group that is focused on, on LLM on Kubernetes, together with the Gateway API Working Group, got together and proposed a solution that's based on uh, gateways and gateway extensions. The idea here is basically that gateways have a very comprehensive view of the entire system, and so they can know and keep track of the state of each and every LLM uh, server pod that is running within our cluster. And so the gateway can know um, which adapters are running in each and every LLM instance, and what is the KV cache utilization, uh, what is the size of the queue for each and every adapter, and basically use this information to make uh, an educated uh, decision, an educated load balancing decision, and decide where a request based on the adapter that it needs should be uh, routed to improve performance, latency, and so on. And uh, the team that built the solution uh, was able to demonstrate a significant uh, uh, increase in throughput and a reduction in latency uh, by just using this uh, LoRa aware load balancing strategy as opposed to just using uh, round robin, uh, simple kind of uh, load balancing strategy. And so the way that this solution was built is uh, by leveraging Anvil Gateway and Anvil Gateway extensions. So um, the team that was uh, responsible for this uh, project uh, built a new component, let's call it the LLM scheduler, and this component has two main responsibilities. First of all, it keeps track of all of the uh, metrics of all of the VLLM pods in our cluster. So basically, this component knows which LoRa adapters are currently running in uh, which LLM pod. It knows what is the uh, resource utilization. It knows what are the queue sizes. And so um, with this metrics, we can perform our second responsibility, which is to act as an external processing service that when a request comes in, uh, as part of the processing, this LLM scheduler essentially decides on what is the most optimal pod to handle a request by analyzing uh, the request's body, identifying the required adapter, and then uh, based on the metrics that we have, uh, finding the pod that is best suited to handle this request. And then uh, the processor would return this information to Envoy using uh, a header mutation. And Envoy can use this uh, pod IP to uh, basically route to this most optimal pod. So before diving into the demo, I just wanted to thank the uh, um, serving working group uh, for their collaboration on this presentation. And if you're interested in this, then you can follow the links on, uh, here on the slide. And also the uh, team is having a talk this week in KubeCon, so you should go and check that out. And if you are generally interested in the topic of AI in Envoy Gateway, we have a new Slack channel for that, so please join and let's try to build a community around that. And also, there is another talk this week um, also on the topic of using Anvil Gateway for AI use cases, also very interesting, so you should also go and check that out if that's interesting for you. And the demo itself is quite simple. Uh, we will quickly go over some manifests and uh, really run through the implementation of the processing server and finally uh, basically demonstrate a very simple uh, LoRa-aware load balancing algorithm uh, that routes uh, requests to the pod that is best suited to handle them. 
So we start out by basically deploying uh, uh, a deployment of the VLLM open source, which is an open source LLM server. Um, it's running on appropriate hardware, and you can see that we're using the Meta Llama model as our base model, and we're using LoRa, LoRa adaptation, uh, as our tuning technique, and we're enabling two uh, sorts of adapters, one for summarizing tweets and the other one for uh, uh, SQL. Our external processor is also yet another deployment in the cluster, uh, exposed by a cluster IP service, um, and the, uh, we are using here an uh, original destination cluster that uh, we were patching the configuration to basically turn the uh, uh, back end uh, into an original destination cluster that allows us to route to uh, the target pod based on the header. This is a part with the external processor, which is basically just a deployment in the cluster and an Envoy extension policy that attaches to it, um, attaches it to an HTTP route. And we're basically defining some behaviors here. So for example, the body is completely buffered before it is being sent over to the um, external processor. And um, yeah, when we want to implement um, uh, an external processor, the easiest way to go about this is to use uh, some of these libraries from the Go control plane, this gRPC interface. Uh, we can register this uh, gRPC server uh, within our Go uh, solution. And then we basically need to implement the main method of this uh, interface, which is the process method. Uh, the process method, uh, we are receiving processing requests for Envoy. And we have to, first of all, distinguish between the sorts of requests, so whether we received headers or a body of the request or the response, and then handle them accordingly uh, by basically performing our logic and generating a response. So if we dive into the handle body request, which is the most interesting part for this uh, particular uh, open source, uh, we can see that we start out by uh, unmarshalling the body that has been buffered so we have it completely, and extracting from the body uh, a specific attribute called model. This is basically the attribute that tells us uh, which adapter is required for this particular LLM request. And then we can use this model as an input to our scheduling algorithm that would determine the IP of the pod that is best suited to handle this particular request. And so um, now that we have that at hand, we can generate a header mutation response. This response essentially uh, is a processing response, as, as we know, is the interface between Envoy and the external processor, and we're uh, doing a header mutation. We're adding a new header to the request on its way out, uh, and this header is called the target pod header, and it contains the IP of the pod that is best suited for handling this request. Now, in order to be able to make these decisions, uh, we are constantly scraping behind the scenes uh, metrics from the VLLM pods, uh, metrics such as uh, which adapters are currently loaded, what is the cache utilization in each and every uh, pod, and uh, what are the queue sizes. And then based on these metrics, we can uh, essentially build uh, a set of filters that would determine the most optimal pod for uh, our uh, purposes. So we have filters like uh, least KV cache, lowest LoRa adapter, uh, and, and so on. And that basically helps us select the best pod. So in our cluster, we have two instances of the VLLM open source. And if we have a quick look at the debug logs of our external processor, we can see that each of these pods currently has a different adapter running within it. One has SQL and the other tweet summary. And now if we make a request using the tweet summary model, uh, we, we get a response, which is already great. But besides that, you can see that behind the scenes, our uh, algorithm essentially filtered out the pod that did not have that adapter loaded and selected the pod that had that adapter loaded, which is what we wanted to achieve, this sort of affinity to the pods that have the necessary uh, adapters. And now if we make a request, the same request really, but just change the model that we're using to the SQL model, we also get a response. You can actually see that the responses are a bit different because these are differently tuned models, but um, the behavior of the external processing service is quite the same. We're selecting the pod that already has the necessary adapter loaded. And now if we'll just run, um, a batch of requests to both of these uh, different models and inspect the traffic, we basically expect the, this thing to, to persist, to continue uh, behaving this way. So if we look at the metrics, we can see that we have two pods of the LLM. Each of them has a different adapter currently loaded. And as the request and traffic comes in, this does not change. This basically means that requests for tweet summary went to the pod that had the tweet summary uh, adapter loaded, and requests for uh, the SQL model went to the pod that had the SQL model loaded. And this essentially achieves this uh, affinity, this sort of LoRa-aware load balancing, where requests are not just sent out 
kind of 50-50 between the pods, but rather they are sent out to the pod that has uh, the best state in terms of, of LoRa to handle these requests. So I think that pretty much covers what we wanted to talk about. Um, if you're interested in getting involved in Avo Gateway, then here are some links. This is the QR for our uh, session feedback. And do we have time for questions? I don't know. We do. We do. Questions, please. <laughs> yes. So using what? So the question was, maybe the question was um, that this is like a very complex load balancing uh, uh, yeah, algorithm. So I'm not like familiar with the specific uh, feature that you're referring to, but I think that since this is, requires like a very intimate knowledge of, which is like very domain specific, right? You have to know things about LLM to make these decisions. It kind of uh, feels um, out of scope for like core Envoy to support that sort of thing, right? And, and this is why, and this is an interesting use case for extensibility in my view, because typically you use extensibility for like security, maybe like transforming requests and responses, but this actually shows that you can use extensibility even for um, load balancing and scheduling, which is pretty cool. Yeah, other questions? Yes. So this is actually uh, a project that was built by um, a group that is not really a part of like the Envoy community necessarily, right? So, um, but we have a bunch of Envoy maintainers with us here that maybe can help us, uh, yeah, answer that question. Um, yeah, I, I guess so, right? I mean, you do see in various applications like performance-aware load balancing. Uh, I think that maybe like RTT-aware load balancing is something that's like generic enough to be part of Envoy, perhaps. Uh, I'm not sure that this sort of um, super domain specific um, uh, performance aware load balancing would uh, necessarily make sense in Envoy, but, uh, um, but this is, again, uh, an extension that you can develop today uh, for your use case with Envoy Gateway. Any other questions? Yes? So I, I think um, we'll be maybe talk about this more, but I think system calls, right, and some libraries. Yeah, basically oh, you... So, sorry, uh, the question was, um, um, why can't we, for example, implement something like this with Wasm as okay. opposed to Xproc? Because you are limited by the sandbox. You, if you use Wasm, you, you are limited by the, I think, proxy Wasm API. Basically, you can access some ATP, uh, uh, make some ATP call. And you can get some request header from the MOA, pass to it. But if you want to access some um, arbitrary protocol, like radius or something natively, you can do that. But uh, you're learning, if you are using like uh, extra process, you can do everything you want. So that's the, I think, main difference between them. And I think also one of the previous talks really mentioned something like this. They started out with Wasm and Go, and then, for example, um, uh, they realized that uh, uh, some of the tiny, tiny Go does not support some of the like core libraries, and, and things become pretty hard. And uh, yeah, here you have the full flexibility to implement your extension as you see fit in whatever technology you see fit. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. I actually, uh, because I mostly work on the control plan side, so from what I know, I think there's only one virtual machine support in, in Watson, right? In Uwe, right now, right? 
but uh, maybe I'm not right. So I don't have this cooperation right now. <laughs> maybe we should you know, ask for the maintainer from way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but this is definitely like an interesting benchmark to perform, yeah. right? So, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, great. So I think that, yeah, we're yeah. also out of time. So thank you, everyone, very, very much. Um, thank you. Yeah.